With sleeves dominating the headlines, Westminster is starting to feel a bit, well, 90s. So I paid a visit to Martin Bell, the man whose elections MP and white suit came to symbolise public revulsion against Westminster sleeves on John Major. I wanted to find out whether probity in Parliament has really improved since the days of bungs in brown envelopes and whether opposition parties should follow his example and stand aside in the North Shropshire by-election. I am inclined to think that the present state of affairs is worse than it was in the late 90s. Oh, just before we go, I have to uh, give you your fees. <laughs> I think that the pressures or the temptations given to MPs to learn, earn large sums of money in so-called consultancies, and it's very hard to draw the line between um, consulting and lobbying, You're be, they're being paid for it. They're being paid in some cases many times their parliamentary salary. And I think now, as then, this is an issue that cuts through to the voters as a government or party's other setbacks don't. Do you accept that a man is innocent unless proved guilty? Yes, so you that's accept that my husband is innocent? I think there's a lot of... Do you accept that my husband is innocent? I'm not going to be facing an ambush here. Let's just, let's just, see, let's just see what comes out. I, I don't know. I couldn't have won Tatton in 1997, I reckoned, without winning over 12,000 Conservatives. And it wasn't difficult. It was a political miracle. I still can't account for it except that there was a depth of feeling against Mr Hamilton right across the constituency. And it was perhaps strongest among many Conservatives, thousands of Conservatives, who felt that he'd let them down. I think that MPs, after what's happened to Owen Paterson, are going to be much more careful about what jobs they take. But I also think a clamour is going to grow for an end to second jobs and all these consultancies altogether. It really is a full-time job being a Member of Parliament. Backbench Member of Parliament, the people expect your attention in every little detail. Now I think there's been a sea change in attitudes again. You mentioned earlier that you had what you might call a second job by some definition as an occasional columnist for the Manchester Evening News. Is it possible to, for MPs to draw the line? I think if you're, shall we say, a uh, dentist, you win a marginal seat. You obviously have to keep your hand in because you may very well lose it at the next election. I think the line can be drawn, and I'm coming to the view that there should be an end to second jobs altogether. And if I had my time again and were not paid £200 a month for my Manchester Evening News column, I think I could absorb that. A Member of Parliament, well, £81,000 salary, it's much more than the average of the constituents, and they know that. Uh, yeah, I think the time is coming for a total ban on second jobs. You are, you know, you're in your white suit now, the famous white suit. You're the archetypal anti-sleaze candidate. Some people have even asked if you'd run again. But do you think that idea of parties laying uh, aside hostilities and backing a Martin Bell-style candidate in North Shropshire is a goer? I think it would have been a sustainable idea if for some reason Owen Paterson had accepted his penalty and stood again either in a by-election or a general election. But well, there's going to be a new Conservative candidate, and I don't think a, a unity candidate is, a, is, a, is, is, is an idea that's going to fly. And Mr Bell has gone as far as to say he thinks that he could actually win this seat and become the MP here for the next three or four years. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Jones. <laughs> that's better. And how important do you think leadership is in all of this? As much as we remember that last Parliament, the 92 Parliament, John Major's only full term as Prime Minister, as being marred by sleaze and affairs. He always attempted to provide a, a positive example, even even if it you know fell by the wayside and he was let down by his troops, for instance, back back to basics, getting the getting the Nolan principles in place. But the key difference now is Boris Johnson, isn't it? Thinking back, back to basics was not a very wise slogan <laughs> under the circumstances. Yes, the key difference is a flamboyant, slightly raffish and popular party leader who has a remarkable inattention to detail and seems to make up his truths as they go along. I think a lot of Conservative MPs feel, feel the backbenchers feel very badly let down by that vote because they're getting it hot and strong from their constituents. They know what the people are thinking. So I think he's going to have to reconsult his party and, uh, and actually lead it rather than go his own way. The Standards Committee, which you sat on during your time in Parliament, has been much maligned in recent days, particularly by the government and supporters of Owen Paterson. Is there any way the process could be improved? I am of the minority that believes that the present system works pretty well. And I've seen how long it takes. It's, there's a painstaking inquiry by the Commissioner for Standards. 
And I don't want a whole lot of lawyers in there. The answer to our present distemper in public life is to me quite simple. If members of parliament want to have a better reputation, it's up to them to behave better. Game, set and match.